In this video we're going to have a look at an energy into conversion example uh, and we're going to take some experimental data to investigate that conversion and determine its efficiency. Specifically the conversion we're going to be looking at is going from GPE, that is gravitational potential energy, to kinetic energy. And we're going to do this by having a look at a trolley rolled down a ramp. So here we've got a trolley uh, on the right hand side on this uh, kinematics ramp here and you can see that what we do is we take the trolley and we're going to roll it down the ramp and we've recorded this experiment on a video to allow us to do uh, some analysis on it with some really neat software so we've got the trolley we simply release it it rolls down the slope uh, this is a slightly higher than usual frame rate so it appears to be going slightly in slow motion and it gets to the bottom um, so as the trolley moves from up here uh, at this level to down here at this level it has lost some height and so it's lost some gravitational potential energy and that's going into this kinetic energy it's got in going down the ramp um, and we can work out those two values we'll see we'll be able to at least um, and so we can work out some sort of efficiency so the formula we're going to need are that for the GPE this is given by M G H for the kinetic energy this is given by a half m v squared uh, now the mass of the trolley is already being measured that's 0 0.7 kilos or 700 grams um, and so uh, G will take a normal value of 9.81 meters per second so to do the calculation we just need to be able uh, to determine the values of uh, h, so the change in height of the trolley, and v, so that's the speed of the trolley. Uh, and so this is the software we're going to use to do this. It's a really nifty one called Tracker uh, Video Analysis. Um, and so you may or may not have noticed that within the video we've also got this meter rule, so this allows us to put in a scale. Um, so we do that with this calibration stick in this tool so I take this, I stretch it out as long as the meter and then I select this and tell it that this is equal to 1 so 1 meter, it was in 100 I could have left it in that and then all the measurements that this software would give us would be in centimeters rather than meters but we want to stick with meters so I've told it this is a 1 meter rule that length is 1 meter and so now we've now got a scale uh, here's the trolley, I now need it to track it. I created a little uh, red dot on the trolley there so that we could track it, but it turns out uh, that this isn't quite high contrast enough uh, for the software to track. And so instead, uh, I found out that this, uh, this little metal axle uh, within the wheel is quite an easily trackable point. So I've created the mass, and now I'm going to use the auto tracker. As you can see, it tells me to shift, control shift, click on the point of interest so I'm going to do that on the axle it's got the axle there and I just press search and so this is going to now working through the frames in each frame it's looking for that axle and tracking it as the trolley rolls down the ramp you can see it's automatically setting up this table full of values and here it's even automatically plotting a graph so this is a time against horizontal position graph so you can see it gradually moving uh, across horizontally over here um, still going and I've told it to stop at a frame where this is uh, near the edge of the screen nearly there, there we go, so that's stopped that's our full set of data uh, so we've got a graph up here but we're going to use this table to pull off some values of the uh, we can see we've got time, uh, x position and the y position the y position is going to be the height and so we can read off some values from that. We can see it starts at a height of 0.111 and it finishes at minus 0.002. Uh, so we can combine those, we can get the difference in height there uh, in order to get the uh, change in height for the change in gravitational potential energy. I can also get it to give me a speed as well. So we can see it's starting off at a zero speed and at the end we can again just read that value off. Uh, so let's take these values 
over to our little working area and we can start plugging in some calculations to get some values. Uh, so we'll start off with the height where we started at it was 0.111 and we're going to finish at minus 0.002. So our delta height is going to be 0.111 minus minus 0.002 and that's going to give us 0.113. We can now plug that in up here um, in order to give us a value for the gravitational potential, element, gravitational potential energy that's been released as a result of falling through this gravitational field. So we're going to do the mass, that's 0.7 times the 9.81 for the value of g times the 0.113 uh, which is the change in height uh, so this was in meters and that gives us a value of 0.776 we'll work to three significant things uh, and this is energy so it's going to have units of joules uh, next up we need to take off this velocity value. So the final velocity down here was 1.249. This will again be in meters per second. Uh, so the velocity is 1.249, we said yes, 1.249 uh, meters per second. And we can punch that into this. So we can do 0.5 times 0.7, so that's the 0.7 kilos for the mass, and the 0.5 for the value of a half. Now we're going to do times 1.249 squared, which gives us a value of 0.546 joules. Now, the conservation of energy tells us that through any pr process, energy cannot be created or destroyed, merely converted from one form to another. And so it's slightly puzzling that we see that we've lost uh, 0.776 joules of gravitational potential energy but the little trolley at the end of the experiment only has 0.546 joules of uh, kinetic energy and so there must be some of this energy the difference uh, between these two values that's about 0.23 uh, 0.23 joules has been lost against frictional forces um, you might be tempted to say uh, drag but this trolley isn't really moving very fast so it's just going to be the frictional forces between the wheels and the ramp and between the wheels and the axle so a little bit of friction um, against the trolley which means it's not going as fast as it could be so some of that energy is being lost to that friction ultimately turned into uh, a tiny tiny amount of heat. Um, so we can actually go a little step further and work out the efficiency of this system so we know that in order to get the efficiency of a system that's going to be the total energy we get out of it divided by the total energy we put into it and so that's going to be this energy we got out is the kinetic energy so 0.546 the energy we put into it is uh, 0.776 that's the gravitational potential energy and so when we take the ratio of those we're going to get 0.546 divided by 0.776 gives us 70%. So that gives us a value of 0.704. We'll uh, just round it to two significant figures, and so that gives us a 70% efficiency for the conversion from this gravitational potential energy to the kinetic energy as a result of the trolley going from uh, this vertical position to this vertical position over here and that is giving it kinetic energy moving along the ramp.